Welcome back. This is Will at Work. I'm Kevin. Today we're looking at the PVP Station Light 3000. So, they've been making clone systems for a while on the black market. That's what I like to call it, even though the market itself can sometimes be Amazon. Uh, it seems like nobody's really putting the hammer down on people reselling uh, these games and these game systems right now. Sometimes game companies and things get together and they do crack down on this stuff for a while. They take different people to court. They send out cease and desist letters and all that kind of stuff. But lately, 2021, 2020, there's been a bit of a, a lull in that kind of thing and, and a lot of con um, a lot of uh, uh, unlicensed titles have shown up on the market. But this one is older. This came out around 2014, I'm thinking, and uh, maybe 2013. It is just a, uh, it says 3D World up here, but then right below it it says 8-bit. Uh, not a lot of 3D 8-bit going on. Uh, there was some, but 2.8-inch LCD, uh, and it says Crash Minds Over Mutant. So this is a very old one. One of the first ones I picked up very cheap, uh, just to kind of see if these things were any good at all. Uh, not really, <laughs> you know. Which, but you know, you got you don't know unless you try, right? Clean off the screen. It's got some smudge on it here. It's got a very small screen. Okay, let me zoom in on that a little bit. That's all I can zoom in. Uh, and um, it did come with a couple of multi carts uh, that have a ridiculous. Uh, this one is like eight, 88,888 in one. That's kind of blurry there. You gotta wait for the camera to catch up. Nope, not really. There's no way there's that many games on there. And then this one here is 777,000. 777 in one. Exclusive card, it says. Uh, so they're kind of cute. They're like mini Sega Genesis type things. But I think this is ultimately just going to be like Famicom games or something. So um, put this in and you play it. Now the one uh, kind of interesting thing is that uh, this has a, um, a video out port on it. So what we'll do is we'll drive the signal out to the capture board and rather than trying to get a, a picture with all of the glare, we'll go ahead and um, plug it straight into uh, the capture board so you guys can see it in practice. And also just to kind of give you an idea of how old this is, uh, we don't even have a micro, we have a USB mini for power. So. Yeah, we're talking PSP and uh, PlayStation 3 era type um, release era time period. So quite a while ago, not going to be anything really current and up to date. I think that's going to be kind of the thing. Like eventually, you know, handheld emulators, uh, clones, etc. As well as, I mean, I, we're kind of there now with some of these a little bit more expensive um uh, home console units will just be able to play everything and we'll look back at these uh, cheaper older ones that only play like 8-bit titles and be like Psh, that's a piece of junk you know what I mean but uh, yeah probably is uh, alright we're going to switch over to the video side and we'll check out uh, the selection of games uh, shortly and uh, we'll just see how this thing performs yeah we got Donkey Kong Jr. Door, door, ice climber, icky, jewelry, load runner, mappy, Mario Brothers. It's hard to know if these are original ones or just um, clones, you know? Like, sometimes they do that kind of thing where uh, somebody makes a version of it themselves. I got Predators down there at the bottom doing like a kick. You think Predators in this cartridge? 
I think there's 888,000 games. You know how long it would take you just to go through that many? But if you look at the selection I'm going through here, they look all the same. Like it looks like there's about 50-some games, maybe 25 games. It just keeps counting up. What's that about? What's that about, uh, China? Just increasing the number but giving us the same games isn't giving us more games. Right? Let's look at Mario Brothers and just see what kind of... Oh. Mario Brothers. This is probably the old school one where you just have to, like, hang out in the sewer. Which I don't really mind. Yeah. This is the first one I played when I was young. This is so, like, um... This is so old school that... I don't even know if, like... Why can't I jump and move? I gotta run and jump? Bullshit. That's all she wrote. And you just basically keep doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, Alright, let's look at the other cartridge. Probably as eight games, and this is seven games. That's my guess. I do like when you turn it on, this music immediately starts playing. Angry, which is like some version of Angry Birds. Tetris 2. Arabian. Balloon Fight. Baseball, Battle City, Binary Land, Bird Week, Bomberman, Kuklu Land, Order of Time. And then that's it. And then it just, just keeps going. Why? Why? Why does it do this? Why can't there be more games? Why? Can't... Let's look at this Angry Birds because there's no touch screen here. How's this going to work? This looks like Angry Birds Adventure. Stage one, rest three. Oh my god, it's like a, it's like a platform game. Kids are crying everywhere. Wow, this is terrible. I think the Angry Birds Company uh, approved of this. They're like, yeah, this is great, guy. This is what we want. We want people to. You guys have evolved. Our. Uh, what's this? What am I pecking? Oh. My God, that's awful. Tenjin presents the Soviet mind game Tetris. So Tenjin, Tenjin, that was a legitimate version of Tetris. Licensed by Mirrorsoft. This is probably a direct port from the NES. I forget the whole thing with um, how you uh, determine... Because there was like two, there were, as far as I recall, there were two versions, at least two versions of Tetris for the NES. And like one wasn't official, and I don't know if it was the Tengen one or what, but like one of them was like, they had to get rid of it or something. So it's like really rare today. I mean, it's not as rare as like that championship sports or whatever the heck it is that they're always talking about selling a million copies of to some guy who wants 
well, not a million, like a million bucks for one copy or something. That it's kind of like I, I don't, I don't get it, like really with the game collecting so much. I mean, I, I do understand that some games are rare, but I don't understand like the demand for games that aren't very good or are, um you know, just rare for rare's sake. Like, you know, if you look at, like, say, paintings, right? Uh, the paintings that are really, t tend to be really well done, tend to be the ones that fetch the most money at auction. People want the, the rare, but they also want, you know, the the old, um, uh, but the ones that look good, right? And then there's like this collection, you know, collector's market where you want to have every one of a certain thing. And I, I get it. I, I'm doing the same thing. Why would I collect all these Pong systems? They're all basically doing the exact same thing. That's true. Uh, but, um, like, I'm not paying uh, crazy amounts of money to to have them. You know what I mean? Like... I, I know to, where to draw the line on a Pong system. And I, I think a lot of the aftermarket money that people want for some of these game systems is too much. I mean, for the longest time, for instance, an Adventure Vision, uh, an Entex Adventure Vision was probably the most expensive um, mass-produced system that you could find uh, occasionally online. And what I mean by that is there are prototype systems and uh, you know, systems that um, are going to fetch a hefty dollar because, you know, they were only, there's only so many of them made. And um, those are a little bit different because that gets into the whole, like, there's a, you know, there's a guy out there that's been waiting for one his whole life and he's competing against some other guy and in auction, they're going to, they're going to go at it. But an adventure vision would normally run you about a thousand dollars, and I could expect there to be a little bit of inflation on that. Um, you know, maybe it's worth about twelve hundred dollars now. But like, if you were to list one right now online, I don't know if you'd get the money for it, but you could probably get away with listing it for about five thousand dollars. And I would say there's a fairly good chance that somebody would pay that kind of money for it right now. And I think that's a little bit crazy. I don't know who is, uh, maybe it's because all that money in crypto or something, you know. Uh, there's some people out there, you know, that have more money. I don't know what it is, but uh, um, they've really pushed up the prices on a lot of um, classic consoles and classic games, um, which is okay, I guess. It's just, you know. I don't know if it's worth it. I guess that's all it is. It's worth it to somebody, then that's all that matters. But I think a lot of times, a lot of things are sold online, and they're not—they're um, not of the value that uh, they would that they're asking the pricing for. You know, I mean, and you could say that—that's true about anything when it comes to things like eBay and such, because there's always somebody out there trying to get like, you know, hey, this is the 10 millionth PlayStation controller. You know, it's just a PlayStation controller, but it's it's like the 10 millionth one or something. And they're like, this one, I'm, we want, you know, $25,000 for this. And I'm thinking, I don't think anybody's, anybody's going to buy that. I mean, it's, just, it's just PlayStation controller, you know? Just because you say it's like the 10 millionth one, like, who cares? Like, I don't know. But then you get weird things where it's like uh, um, a gold-plated PlayStation but, you know, anybody could make, like, their own, like, if you were rich, like, you could make a gold plate of PlayStation. But, you know, then they'll have, like, some sort of, like, this one was from a contest in Italy for, and Sony put on for, uh, you know, an elephant breeding thing. Or, and so then it has some sort of official uh, um, backing behind it. And those things can tend to be worth a little bit more. People will bid those kinds of things up due to their rarity but i don't know uh, it's it's weird I, I i just don't think the market is that is that big um for a lot of this stuff uh, but currently currently the prices on a lot of systems are really really outrageous and uh 
not not to say that's all of them. Like if you're if you're sitting on like an old GameCube or something, you're not going to get anything for it. I mean, nothing really. But uh, what is kind of interesting is that uh, of the game systems that you do sell that are old, like if you had a you know a Super Nintendo that was still working and in good shape or something, like at the very least, I think you can get your money back on what you originally paid for it in a lot of cases. You know, if you've got it in good shape, and because right now people are just buying everything. You know. Uh, surprising. So, anyway, that piece of crap that we looked at was the uh, PVP station, Light 3000. It's not good. It's not for sale anymore, as far as I know. So, you won't run across another one. Thank God for that. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll try to get you something a little bit more normal for us to look at next.